sous vide an entire chicken. So you think you're ready to sous vide a whole chicken? Well, don't be freaked out. You can totally do it. Although it, it is actually quite a, uh, quite a bit different than sous vide cooking chicken breasts, for example. So I'm gonna take you into the kitchen today and show you how to sous vide an entire chicken. It looks delicious, it tastes delicious, it's juicy, it's moist, and I'm pretty sure you're going to love it. If you want to feed a whole family or just want some serious leftovers for the week, this is a recipe you will dig. Right here, you're gonna learn first how to vacuum seal a hoe chicken, what you have to do before you even put it into the bag to vacuum seal it. There's a little trick there so it cooks perfectly. And then I'm gonna go over the right time and temperature for you to sous vide your entire chicken. It's gonna be delicious and I can't wait to show you. Oh, by the way, I'm Jenna here from Sip By Go and you can subscribe to the Sip By Go channel on YouTube and make sure to click the little bell if you want to know when my next sous vide recipes come out. I have so many delicious things coming your way. So once the chicken is dry, you can season it, but actually you're gonna to wanna to spatchcock it first. Let it rain salt on the bottom. Okay, can you crack some more pepper for me? It's important to spatchcock the chicken so it cooks evenly. So let's walk out, walk through how to uh, spatchcock the chicken. You're going to need to get out some sharp kitchen shears and what you're going to do is flip the chicken so the chicken breast side is down. That'll bring the backbone up so you're able to cut it out. So you cut along the backbone on one side and then you cut along the backbone on the other side. Um, make sure not to hit the bone and as you can see using Really sharp shears is pretty critical so you can make a nice even cut. It does get slippery when you're doing this. So you fully remove the backbone and you could also just, I mean, you could discard it or if you're like us, you could put it in a bag in the freezer that is for making chicken stock later. But anyway, so you get that bone out of there, there and then you flip over the chicken and you have to really push it down and you kind of break the bones so they completely flatten out. See, you can't just cook the chicken in its original shape because it's not gonna cook evenly. And this is the fastest way to make sure you can cook the entire sous vide chicken evenly so it comes out beautifully when it's done in the sous vide bath. So next we're gonna put the sous vide bird, the sous vide whole chicken into a bag and it's time to cook it. When I was writing the Home Chef Sous Vide Cookbook, I was inundated with a ton of recipes that I wanted to include. And this is just one of the very few regrets I have that didn't make it into the book. The thing is, it just required way too much testing and I had a deadline to meet and this one just could not make it. So I'm so happy to share it with you, but I do have over 100 recipes in this book if you're looking for some sous vide inspiration. Now, I definitely prefer to vacuum seal over putting the sous vide whole chicken into a large Ziploc bag. You need to start with a really large vacuum seal bag, but the reason here is it's easier to keep the chicken flat. And I'm gonna show you shortly a side view of that where you can see exactly how flattened out this chicken is. You wanna make sure as it goes along that the legs don't um, get too close to the original shape that they remain flat. So look here as you see when I uh, tip the bird on its hind legs. <laughs> um, it's nice and flat and that's going to allow this three pound sous vide whole chicken to cook evenly in the sous vide bath. If you're meal prepping, now is a good time to put the chicken in the freezer or the fridge or just cook it. So I am curious, what is your favorite food to sous vide? And if for some reason you have not yet sous vide, I would actually recommend doing a chicken breast recipe before jumping into a whole chicken. But anyways, you can let me know in the comments what your favorite thing to sous vide is. And if you haven't sous vide anything yet, I wanna hear from you too.
So set your sous vide machine when it's time to cook the chicken. This recipe takes about a half day. You can get all the directions at sipbitego.com. So when you are ready, you put it in the bath. The water's nice and warm. It goes for a little swim. And then the sous vide whole chicken is going to come out and there's going to be some prep work that's done. But this is a really easy cook as far as babysitting it goes. You just drop it in and you walk away. Now, just take a quick look here on the counter. You'll see that I always use a cutting board under all of my sous vide cooks. The reason is because you have to be careful that natural countertops don't get uh, ruined with sous vide cooking. It's something that happens, unfortunately. It's never happened to me, but I learned early on just always to put a cutting board under. So when the chicken is done cooking from the sous vide bath, it's time to shock it in an ice bath. That's going to cool it. You could also put it in the fridge or the freezer after, but I'm going to go right into broiling it in the oven, which is going to turn this into like a roasted sous vide whole chicken experience. And yeah, there was a little gunk left over, so just pat that all dry so it is a nice clean bird and when it goes into the oven it's able to roast and it's not all steaming because there's too much water on the outside so i put a bunch of butter on the outside here's a beautiful slow-mo for you i just thought it glistening was kind of something out of a dream so here i'm putting liberally a bunch of butter on the outside of the chicken and then cracking some fresh pepper on top and some garlic salt, and then it's ready to go in the broiler. Now this bird is broiled on high for, I don't know, about five to 10 minutes. It really depends on your oven. We have this double oven situation and each of them cooks differently. One's a convection oven, one just heats it. So uh, use your judgment here. You want it to look like this when it's done. It's going to come out golden brown and rotate it in the oven like you saw me do if sometimes your oven is uneven when it heats. Oh my goodness, doesn't it look gorgeous? Well, my husband, who was a chef when we met, um, is still a home chef now, but anyways, he always says to let the food rest for about as long as it cooked. Now, this cooks like all day, so that's not gonna go on here, but letting the chicken cook for about 15 to 30 minutes 30 minutes if you have the time is really ideal, but letting it cool for about 30 minutes, letting it rest, you could always put some tin foil over it if you're concerned about it getting cool, although it stays pretty warm. Just poke a hole at the top of the tin foil. But anyways, letting it cool for 30 minutes is going to help everything set inside and it should be good to go. Wow, it's so beautiful. I. I need 30 minutes for it to rest just because I take 30 minutes worth of photos on my food. My family is used to waiting. Just because the food is out of the oven does not mean anything is ready to eat. I have to photograph it a million times. So anyways, here Chef Hubs is just helping me cut up the chicken so I can do the fancy camera work. and. He is so neat how he does this. He does the legs, he does the wings, he then goes for the chicken breast, cuts that up. So all of this is perfectly cooked. If for some reason you have cooking issues, I know people are gonna not enjoy that I say this and you'll see why at sitbiko.com but um, in the post for this recipe. But one time this came out not so good. It was actually raw because something was wrong with my sous vide machine. It, my sous vide machine essentially died during the cook. And so it only heat to like 120 degrees. So if that's the case and your chicken doesn't look like this on the inside, if your chicken is raw, if it is bright red, if it's not tender and pulls apart easily with a fork, look at, I mean, this is amazing. But if it's not like that, Yes, there are different ways to do it, but if you have a complete screw up and you still need to get dinner on the table, I'm gonna be real with you and tell you to just stick the bird in the oven and let it cook to 165. Now, there are some technical details here in this recipe, but it is actually pretty straightforward once you get a hang of the little tricks you have to know, like spatchcocking the chicken, for example. But 
If you're like me and you like having a printed out recipe, head on over to sipbitego.com and that's where you're gonna be able to print out the recipe and see my step-by-step -step guide on how to sous vide a whole chicken. So if you have a friend that's like me, like you, and is on a mission to sous vide everything, please go ahead and send them this video. It really means so much to me when I see that people cook the food that I make because I really want you to have delicious food. So head on over to sipbyco.com for those details. Well, until next time, make sure to subscribe so you're the first one to know when a new video pops up on YouTube. I will stop bouncing up and down now. <laughs> and I want to say to you, have a wonderful and delicious day. Cheers!